My name is Mike Rash. Today we're going to go do a pre-trip inspection, Class A video. We're going to inspect the exterior of the vehicle. Everything on the exterior of the vehicle, you just verbally tell me what you check it for. Once we get done with the exterior of the vehicle, we'll go inside the cab. Everything inside the cab, you actually have to demonstrate. We're going to do uh, sections of the vehicle. Class A, we'll do first. We'll do the front of the vehicle. Then we'll do the engine compartment. We'll do the steering components. And then we'll do the front driver side axle. Secondly, we'll do Form B, which is going to be from the driver door fuel area to the rear of the vehicle. It'll include the underside of the vehicle and one rear driver side axle. Then we're going to do Form C, which is going to be the trailer. We'll also inspect the coupling system with the truck and trailer, which everybody has to do, whether you draw Form A, B, or C, or full form. And then everybody has to do the in cab inspection, where we crank it up. Tell me why you check inside the cab. We'll get started with Form A. We'll inspect the front of the vehicle. First off, I'd like to inspect my lights. Lights on the front should be amber in color, clean, not cracked, securely mounted. Headlights should be clear, clean, not cracked, securely mounted. I have to check all both sides. Clean, not cracked, securely mounted, amber. Clean, not cracked. Lights at the top, my clearance lights, clean, securely mounted, amber in color. I'd like to check underneath my vehicle for any leaks that I might have. You look for puddles, oil, coolant, any fluids underneath my vehicle. I'm going to open the hood and inspect my engine compartment. Start on the passenger side. First thing I'd like to inspect is my water pump. My water pumps it bolts should be tight, not leaking, belt driven, check my belt, no splits or cuts on my belt, my belt tension should be half inch to three quarter inch of tension on my belt, check my coolant, check my coolant level should be between maximum and minimum, I'd like to check this side of the motor for any excess of leaks, check all my hoses on this side of the motor, they should not be kinked, swollen, clamps, should all be tight, no leaking hoses. Check this side of my engine, check all my hoses, that they're not kinked, swollen, clamps are tight, not leaking, no excessive leaks on this side of my engine. Check my alternator, it's belt driven, it should be securely mounted, wires should be secure on the back of my alternator, it's belt driven, my belt should be half inch to three quarter inch of tension. No splits or cuts on my belt. Check my engine oil. Make sure it's between add and pull. Check my power steering. Check the level. Make sure it's between add and pull. I have to say that it is gear driven. My power steering pump is on the back of my motor. It's gear driven. Working properly not leaking, securely mounted. Check my air compressor which is right above my power steering pump. It should be working properly. Line should be secure, not leaking, securely mounted and gear driven. I have to say it's gear driven. Okay, I'd like to go on to my steering components. I check my steering box, make sure it's securely mounted, bolts are tight, it's not leaking, it's not cracked. Power steering hoses, clamps are tight, hoses aren't kinked, hoses aren't leaking. Check my steering linkage, it's not bent or broke. My bolts are all tight. I'll check that all the way to my axle and check my tie rod should be straight, bolts are tight, not bent, broke, cracked. 
we'll go on and check our axle. Our axle consists of our brake parts, our suspension parts, and our wheel parts. We'll start with our suspension parts. Uh, we'll start with the spring mounts. I'll check to make sure my bolts are tight, not cracked. Any bushings that you have should be not torn or missing. You have to check the rear spring mount, also your front spring mount for the same thing. Not cracked, bolts are tight, any bushings aren't missing or split. Check my leaf springs. They should all be in alignment. Shouldn't be cracked, rusted. Check my U-bolts. They should not be shifted. Nuts are tight, not cracked or rusted. And check my shock absorber. It should be straight, bolts are tight, should not be leaking. Go on to my brake parts. My brake parts are my hoses, air hoses. They shouldn't be kinked or swollen or leaking. Fittings should be secure. Check my brake chamber. Nuts should be tight. Brake ch chamber should not be leaking, cracked. And I have to check my band, make sure my band is secure around my brake chamber. I'll check my push rod. My push rod should be straight. Should not travel over one inch when I apply my foot brake on the inside. I'll check my slack adjuster. My slack adjuster should be straight, not cracked, and my pin should be secure attaching it to my push rod. On the inside, my brake parts are my drum. I should check check my drum, make sure it's smooth, no cracks, no grease or oil, and my bolts are tight. I will check my brake linings. They should be sufficient, approximately a quarter inch. It should be smooth, not chipped, no grease or oil on my brake pads or brake linings. Then I'd like to do my wheel parts. My wheel parts are my tire. Front tire, minimum tread depth should be 4 30 seconds of an inch. The wear on it should be even, no nails. The sidewall should have no splits, cuts, bubbles. I would check my valve stem, should be straight, should have a cap, not leaking and I would also check my tire pressure with the air gauge. I'll check my rim. My rim should have no welding on it. Should have no cracks. Should have a good feed to the tire. It's not rusted. Check my lug nuts. Make sure none are missing. They're tight. No signs of rust. That might indicate my lug nuts are loose. And I'll check my axle seal. Bolts are tight. My axle seal should not be leaking. That would conclude form A. We're going to do form B. Form B is from the driver door fuel area to the rear of the vehicle. We just have to do one axle on the rear of the vehicle. We'll start with the door. The door should open and close. It should have no damage to it, no holes. Check my hinges on the inside of my door. 
they should be secure no missing bolts they're not broken and check my seal on the door should not be ripped or torn I'll check my mirror my bracket should be straight securely mounted not bent, bent or broke check the mirror itself should have no cracks should be clean from there we'll check the diesel exhaust fluid tank should be securely mounted not leaking no damage to the tank itself cap should be secure with the latch uh, should be sealed cap should not be leaking from there we'll go on to the fuel tank the fuel tank should be securely mounted strap should not be should be holes they're not cracked should have a rubber underneath it so we don't rub metal to metal my fuel tank's not dented not cracked not leaking check my fuel cap should have a seal on the inside should have a chain on the inside my fuel cap should not be leaking check my steps make sure my steps are securely mounted bolts or rivets are secure should be straight not cracked should be no grease or oil or debris on my steps all right on the passenger side of the vehicle we have something unique it's our exhaust system we have to come over and check our whole exhaust system we'll start up at the engine we've got our turbo we have to check make sure it's securely mounted our clamps are tight no signs of soot securely mounted and not leaking we'll follow the clamps are tight going into the piping our pipe isn't bent or rusted no signs of soot clamps are tight goes into our emission devices these emission devices we have to make sure that they're securely mounted no signs of soot no broken welds any clamps that we have or hoses that they're all tight secure Clamps going into this part are secure, no signs of soot. Uh, any bracing that we have has to be securely mounted, no missing bolts, not cracked, bent, broke, no signs of soot. We'll come out to our stack, which our clamps are tight. Any bracing that we have is securely mounted, no broken welds, bolts are tight, not bent or broke. My stack doesn't show any signs of soot. Uh, securely mounted all the way to the top. Must inspect our exhaust system thoroughly all the way from the engine all the way to the stack. Continue on with my frame. My frame should be straight, no cracks, no holes. Should not be twisted. My cross members should be straight, bolts in place. Bolts should not be loose or missing. Not welded. Check my catwalk. My catwalk should be secure. Bolts all tight. No grease or oil on my catwalk. Check my drive shaft. Drive shaft should be straight. Carrier bearing should be secure. Bolts are tight. My U joints should be have no debris in them, bolts should be tight. We'll check an axle. Uh, we'll inspect our rear axle here. We'll inspect our brake parts. Start on the inside, I'll check my brake hoses. They should not be kinked, swollen, leaking. Fitting should be tight, not leaking. Check my brake chamber. Should be securely mounted. Not cracked. Not leaking. Clamp is secure on my brake chamber. My push rod comes out of the back of my brake chamber. Should be straight. Should not release over an inch with the parking brake released. Because it's a double brake chamber. Check my slack adjuster bolts are tight should be straight 
pin should be hold in place holding it to my push rod. Inside I check my brake drums. My drums should be smooth, no cracks, no grease or oil, bolts are tight. Should also check my brake pads. They should be sufficient, approximately a quarter inch, no grease or oil, should not be chipped. We'll go to the suspension parts. I'd like to check my spring mounts. Got the front spring mount, all the bolts are tight, it's not cracked, it's securely mounted. Rear spring mount, securely mounted, bolts are tight, not cracked. Check my leaf springs. These are a little different. They're on the side, but check springs or torsion arms. Not cracked. In alignment. Not twisted. Not rusted. Check my U bolts. They should be tight. Not shifted. Not rusted. Check my shock absorber. My shock absorber should be straight. Securely mounted, not leaking. Check my airbag, should be securely mounted. Bracket holding it should be in place. Nuts are tight, should not be weather cracked or leaking. Okay, we'll come out and inspect the tire. A minimum tread depth should be 2 seconds of an inch. Tread wear should be even, no nails. Check the side walls of my tires. Make sure there's no splits or cuts or bubbles. Check my valve stem. Straight, not leaking, has a cap. Check my tire pressure with the gauge. Check my rim, no cracks on my rim, no welds. Has a good beat to the tire not rusted. Check my lug nuts, none missing, all tight, no signs of rust to indicate they might be loose. Check my axle seal, nuts are tight, none missing, no signs of leak on my axle seal. I also like to check in between my tires, no debris, no rocks or wood, and make sure my rims are flush together in between my tires. Check my mud flap. Should be whole, not split or cut. Should be sufficient in length. Should be securely mounted. Check my lights on the rear of my vehicle. Should be red in color. Clean, not cracked, securely mounted. That would conclude form B. Form C, which is going to be the trailer. We'll start with the front of the trailer. The front of the trailer should have no holes, any welds should not be broken, any rivets that you have should be secure. Check my tarp rack, it should be securely mounted, not bent or broke. Come to the landing gear. My landing gear should be straight, any bracing should be secure. No broken welds or bolts. Pads 
should not be bent or broke. They should be whole. Landing gear should be all the way up. If you have a handle, the handle should be secured. I'll check my frame. No cracks in the frame. No welding. No holes. Any cross members should be straight, welded in place, or bolted in place. And I have to check my trailer for any holes in the floor of my trailer. We'll proceed to the rear of my trailer. We only have to inspect one axle. I'll inspect my rear axle. We'll start from the outside and work inside on this axle. I'd like to start with my wheel seal. Should be bolts should be tight. Should be no leaks. This has a sight glass to check my fluid. I have to check my fluid and make sure it's at sufficient level. Check my lug nuts. Make sure there's none missing. All are tight. No signs of rust indicate my lug nuts might be loose. I check my rim. No cracks on my rim. No welds on my rim. Has a good bead to the tire. It's not rusted. Check my tire. Uh, start with my valve stem. Should be straight. Not leaking. Cap in place. Check my tire pressure with an air gauge. Side walls of my tire should have no splits or cuts or bubbles. Minimum tread depth should be two thirty seconds of an inch. I'll check in between my tires. Make sure there's no debris. My rims are flush together. We'll go on to my suspension. My suspension, my spring mounts, they're welded in place. No broken welds. All my bolts are tight. My front spring mount is not cracked. Also check my rear spring mount the same way. No broken welds. No muscle and bolts. Tight. Rear spring mount is not bent or cracked. We'll check my springs. They should be straight in alignment. Not cracked or rusted. Check my U-bolts. Should not be shifted. Not cracked. Nuts should be tight. And check my torque arm. It should be straight. No missing bolts. It's not cracked. Bushings should be whole or not missing. I'm going to go around the rear of my trailer. I can see my brake parts a little easier from the rear. I'll check my air hose. Make sure it's not kinked, swollen, fittings are secure, air hose is not leaking. My brake chamber should be securely mounted, nuts are tight, not cracked, leaking. I've got to check my clamps on my brake chambers, double brake chamber. Check my push rod. My push rod should be straight, should not be cracked, should not travel over one inch with the parking brake released. Check my slack adjuster. My pins are in place. Attaching it to my push rod. My slack adjuster is straight. Not cracked. Go to my drums. My drum should be smooth. Not cracked. No grease or oil. Bolts are tight. Check my brake pads. Should be sufficient approximately a quarter inch. Should not be chipped. No grease or oil on my brake pads. Then we'll inspect the rear of our vehicle. Our mud flaps. No missing bolts. Not split or cut. Should be sufficient length. Check my door. My door should open and close. Do not have any holes, no broken welds. I'll check my hinges at the top, no missing bolts. Should be secure. If I have any type of seal, I will check the seal on my door. We'll check my lights. They should be securely mounted, not cracked, clean, red. 
in color. Check any reflective tape that I have. Should not be peeling, should be whole, should be clean on both my truck and my tailgate. That concludes form C of the video. Next we're going to do the coupling system. We're going to inspect the coupling system, which is our air and electric lines and fifth wheel area. For a Class A test, everybody has to do the coupling system. We'll start in the front here with our air lines, our couplings, our fittings are securely mounted, not leaking, they're whole. I'll check my electrical plug in. It's plugged in all the way. There should be no debris in the prongs. I would check my electrical line. It should be whole with no tape. Should not be rubbing, split or cut. Check my air lines. It should not be leaking. Should not be kinked, swollen. Should be secure so they're not rubbing. Check the fittings at this end. Rubber gaskets, grommets should be whole. Should not be leaking. All my fittings should be secured, nuts in place. And again, check my plug-in, my electrical plug-in at this end. Should be all the way in, no debris in the prongs. We'll go on to our fifth wheel area. I'll start from the bottom. I'll check my bolts, make sure there's no missing bolts. They should all be tight. Check my bracket, make sure no broken welds, should be straight, it's not rusted. I would check my locking pins. This is a closed system. My locking pins are actually on the inside. My locking pins lock in these grooves. And that's what you want to check. This fifth wheel has an exterior locking pin system, but that's what you're checking for, that your locking pins are locked all the way in these grooves. I would check my airline that it's not leaking, it's not kinked or swollen. I would check my platform which is my base or my pedestal it should not be cracked, it's not rusted, no broken welds. I would check my release arm, this should release freely, it's pushed in now we're hooked up, should be in the locked position. We'll check my fifth wheel plate. My fifth wheel plate should be whole, no cracks. Should be flat. Pin should be in the side of it. This is a bolt, should be tight. Should be greased. My fifth wheel plate should also be greased. There should be no gap in between my fifth wheel plate and my trailer apron. I would check my trailer apron. It's not separated from my trailer. Should have grease. Should be flat. No holes or cracks on my fifth wheel trailer apron. I'd like to go around back. In back, we look in the back of my fifth wheel plate supposed to check to make sure your locking jaws are wrapped around your kingpin. It should be 
secure around the kingpin. My kingpin should also be straight, no broken welds that welded to the trailer apron should not be chipped. Also, I would check my clearance in between my truck and trailer. Make sure that when I turn my trailer does not hit my landing gear or any part of my trailer. That concludes our fifth wheel area, our coupling system, and our electric lines. Next we'll go inside the cab and do our engine start. We'll do our in-cab inspection. Um, first I'd like to inspect my seat belt. Uh, should be securely mounted at the top, bottom. Should have no rips or cuts, frays in it. Should latch properly, securely mounted at the bottom. Check my safety equipment. Which should You should have a fully charged mounted fire extinguisher. Should also have three red reflective triangles and also spare fuses or breakers, whatever the truck is equipped with. Uh, we're going to do a safe start. We have an automatic transmission vehicle, so we must make sure the vehicle is in neutral. First thing we're going to check is our ABS light and our DEF light. I turn the key, my ABS light should come on and go off, saying that my ABS system is working properly, and my DEF light should also go on and off. You should also have at least an eighth of a tank showing registering on your uh, gauge for your DEF. We'll crank up. First thing we want to check is our oil pressure gauge. Make sure that it rises immediately, operate in the safe range. Also check my temperature gauge. Make sure my needle rises, should be operating in the same safe range. Also check my voltmeter. It's digital, should operate in the safe range. And I'll also make sure that my air gauges build up. They should build up to approximately 120, 130 pounds. You must say that they uh, reach governor cutoff to get credit for them. They will actually purge when they reach governor cutoff. I check my lighting indicators. My left arrow should blink. My right arrow should blink. My four ways, both arrows should blink. And also check my high beam indicator. My high beam indicator should work properly. Okay, they're at maximum pressure now. I'd like to go ahead and check my horns. Electric horn should work, air horn should work. Check my heater and defroster. Check my heater. Turn that on. Make sure the blows the blows out of the bottom. And I'll check my defroster. Make sure that my defroster is working properly. Check my windshield. My windshield's not cracked, no stickers, clean. I check my mirrors, make sure that they're not cracked, they're clean, and also adjust it. Check my windshield wipers. 
windshield wipers are here. Uh, to make sure that they operate properly, uh, push the fluid, which is right above that switch. Make sure your fluid works properly. Also want to make sure that my windshield wiper blades aren't bent or broke, or split or cut, and my arms aren't bent or broke. Okay, we're at Governor Cutoff. I'd like to go ahead and uh, check my parking brakes. Uh, what I'd like to do is you have to check your truck parking brake and trailer parking brake. Must be a Governor Cutoff for maximum pressure to start this. Check my truck parking brake, so we're going to release the trailer parking brake. And I'm actually going to put it in gear. And I will try to tug gently against the truck parking brake to make sure it's working properly. Go back to neutral. Now we'll check the trailer parking brake. I will push in the truck parking brake. Again, put it in gear. Pull against it gently to make sure my trailer parking brake is working properly. Neutral. And my next what I'd like to do next is check my service brake. And what I'm going to do here is um, we're going to pull forward five mile an hour and I'm going to hit my service brake, which is my foot brake. And we're going to make sure that uh, we have a good foot brake and that my wheel doesn't pull left or right. So we'll put this in gear. Pull up approximately five mile an hour and hit our foot brake. Wheel didn't pull left or right. We do have a good pedal. Back this back in place. We're going to crank up our vehicle and do our air brake check. Air brake check is pass fail on the test. Air brake check is going to check three things. It's going to check that your um, that we don't have any air leaks in our system. It's going to check your low air warning device. It's also going to check that your spring brakes close when you get low on air. So we're at maximum pressure, governor cut off. My tanks have perched. Uh, I'm going to roll my window down. I'm going to shut my motor off. Okay. I'm going to turn my key on so my gauge will work. And I'm going to release my parking brakes. Okay. I'm going to apply the foot brake. 
and make sure my gauge settles. At this point, engine off, key to the on position, parking brakes released, my foot on the brake, air gauge settled. I'm going to time for one minute, get that started, and I'm going to watch my gauge. And I cannot lose more than four pounds in a minute on my air gauge. I'm also going to listen for leaks. I must tell the examiner that you're listening for leaks and that you cannot lose more than four pounds in one minute. The state does allow you to use your cell phone as a timer for this test. That's the only time you're allowed to use your cell phone is for the air brake check to do the minute time. Okay, we've gone our minute. We have not lost more than four pounds in one minute. Second part of the air brake check checks your low air warning device. What I'm going to do is fan my brake pedal, which is releasing it and applying it quickly. Approximately 55 pounds, or whatever the manufacturer has set the low air warning device at. Your light should come on, the buzzer should come on, warning you you are low on air so that you may exit the road safely to get off the road and the uh, third part of the air brake check checks to make sure that your parking brakes pop out when your brakes close so approximately 20 to 40 pounds your parking brakes should pop out telling you that your brakes are closed okay there's my parking brakes they have popped out and that concludes my air brake check checking for the leaks checking the lower warning device and also checking that your parking brakes pop out.